Hey folks, Nass here. Another episode of Medieval Dynasty in the Oxbow. Alrighty, as you can see, we are clearly in spring now. We've got uh, the grass growing. We got the green colors. We have a little bit more livelihood uh, just because of the color um, over winter. Now, granted, I, I really like the winters here because it is beautiful in the wintertime and stuff. Um, but I do like the spring and summer colors. Absolutely. Plus, we uh, we went through the winter and we were doing some modifications to the village. We were upgrading and decorating and making things better. Now, I put up this lattice work behind the little seating area here. Now, granted, when I put it up, it was just covered in snow and it was kind of gray and dull. But uh, I added it in order to, you know, one, block that gap between the uh, the houses back there. Oh, excuse me, sir. Um, because I didn't like the other fencing options. Now, granted, we got the low fencing. Now, I don't mind the low fencing now on the sides because it looks like it blocks off the bottom of the houses a little bit, which I'm fine with that. But it doesn't block the window either. Um, but it does keep the villagers from going between the buildings, between the houses and stuff. And we'll walk down here. I did put the log fencing between the houses. I added a few barrels in here. We came down to this back side. I put again the lattice work um, between here to keep them from going in this direction. Just trying to keep the villagers from going places to where they may get stuck, so to say. Now, granted, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I may end up doing the same thing. But we also added all of these little fire bowls, which I think are really neat. They do add some light in the evening times and stuff. So they, you know, at least the village looks uh, lived in at night. <laughs> we added this um, laundry area. So like the villagers would come in, they drop their bags of dirty laundry. They would end up getting washed in the washing stations and then hung up to dry on the drying racks, the clothes racks. And then I've got a little folded, couple of folding stations over here to where the clothes get folded and then put into bundles, ready to go back to the houses all nice and clean. Uh, let's see, we also added um, a few of the little decorative uh, workstations and stuff. So like the hunting lodge has the little working log here to work some of the leather. Uh, we also have behind the workshop, the tanning stations. Uh, so we've got, what is it? The, what was it? Goat, wolf, and bear, I think is what it was. I think that's what those were. Does it tell me? No, it doesn't tell me. But we put, uh, put those back here. Just a little, little area across the street from, uh, the hunting lodge. And then... We came up here, I added these little fencing uh, blockades next to the woodshed just to kind of liven it up a little bit. And then we've got these wood chopping stations uh, set up back behind the woodsheds like they've been chopping and stacking firewood for the season. And then added a couple of lights as well, the little uh, fire bowls. Of course, I finished the fencing all the way around this back side to close off all these different areas. But I think it's turned out pretty good. Uh, we also added fencing around uh, all of the animal area. So this entire area right here where I'm standing is going to be the animal area. Uh, so right now we've got the, the pigs and piglet. Uh, we got Miss Donkey in the donkey shed there. And then I've added the fencing to block off, you know, to section off, not necessarily block off, section off the actual farm crops and everything. So we've got our flax and carrot, cabbage, oat, and rye. Now I went through, as you can see at the top of the screen, we are already on like day two. Um, day two? Day three. It might be day three already. <laughs> yeah, it's day three already uh, of spring. Now I did go through first couple of days of spring and I prepped and put fertilizer and seed and everything in every one of these crops. So these first two crops here, let me get in third person. It's kind of bugging me. I feel like I'm walking on my knees. Uh, these first two here are cabbage, which 
I don't know that we really need the cabbage for fertilizer because we're getting the fertilizer from the pigs. Now, when I came out here to put fertilizer in this area, so in the spring, I think I used close to 400 fertilizer for the crops that are available right now. Oh, I've got to gather that stuff. I'll have to do that tonight. What is that? Rye. I got to gather the rye tonight. Um, but anyway, I used close to 400 um, fertilizer, I think is what it was. Let's see. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So we have eight, uh, eight farming plots, the, the whole thing. The, each one of them is 45 squares. Um, <clears throat> so two plots is 90. So... I, that's how I counted it out. 90, I just said, well, okay, 100. So I had eight plots, so I took out 400 fertilizer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, I didn't use all 400. I think I used, you know, what would that have been? That would have been 10 shy on each one. So 40 shy, so 360 fertilizer uh, is what I actually used for these plots. Um, now, the carrot, carrot we planted in the winter. And the rye over there that I've got to harvest, we planted in autumn. So these, those right now, those are the only two different crops. Now, the cabbage can get planted twice a year. So after, so next season, I believe we'll gather this and be able to replant cabbage again. But I think, I think, I think, what I might do is potentially use the cabbage for meals to sell i've been kind of, i've been trying to look at the meals and selling them and had their values and stuff like that and i think we may end up doing that either that or i may change the one of the cabbage into carrot maybe and then do stew because stew was looking like something that could be good to sell as well we, I'll figure all of that out. If you guys are, are actually selling uh, the meals, kind of get, kind of leave in the in the comments what you're selling, as opposed to. So the meal you're selling, the cost, as opposed to selling the ingredients individually. You know, so if it requires two meat. Well, if you can turn that two meat into dry meat or roasted meat and sell it for more and then whatever the vegetables are, um, what's what's the, the cost difference? You know, how much profit are you really making? That's what I'm trying to, to see because I've really never gone through the meals and stuff before to see which ones are really good for selling. Um, now, granted, obviously your metal tools and stuff are probably going to be better to sell you're going to make more money but i'm just trying to do some variety of things because you can easily um farm up materials and hunt materials to cook a lot of times easier than you can go and get metals to sell you know because i've got the one cave i only use the one cave uh, it's not like I'm going around the map and hitting all of the different caves. Now, if you do that kind of play style, then obviously you can make more money and you have a potential of selling out or buying out all of the coin from all of the vendors on the map. And ideally, that's what we would like to do in a season's time is to empty all of the vendors coins from their pockets that's that's the whole idea <laughs> now in the past what i've done i used to before the oxbow update uh so we were just in the valley my go-to stuff were arrows regardless of whether it was uh stone or uh copper bronze or iron eventually I went to iron and it was all iron uh, i would go to iron arrows or iron bolts uh one because they're light and you can carry a ton of them and they sold for a decent amount of coin um and then also grains so like your wheat and flax seeds used to sell for the most amount of money and they may still do but i don't think they sell for as much as they used to um because they used to sell for like i don't know what 10 coins a piece or something like that what do they sell for now do i even have some that i can look cabbage uh, flax seed. Yeah, see, flax seed, the price is six. We're going to sell it for three. 
So they they've cut the the price the selling price of the flaxseed from before the oxbow to now by two thirds. You know, so it's not it's not hugely profitable anymore. You know, because they they've they've changed the economy. They being the the dev team and and toplets and stuff. They've changed the economy of the game by changing all of these prices. Because it used to be stone. Uh, stone knives were your day one way to really make money, you know, because they were selling stone knives used to sell for 20 coins a piece, right? which was huge, hugely OP, you know. <laughs> but now you've really got a, you, you've got a lot more choices in how to make money. Um, and, and I think everything is, is evening out quite a bit. And I've had some comments and stuff. Now, again, if you are selling stuff and you're making loads of money or you're selling out entire villages uh in a day or whatever let us know in the comments let everybody know in the comments what you're selling uh, what stage of the game you're at what you know what building you're using or something like that just to kind of give ideas and share with with the community and stuff but anyway I clearly need to take a bath. I'm getting dirty. I've got the little marker down there. I'm going to need to eat and drink. But I've gotten most of my stuff done. So I've went through my cave. I got all of my ores out. I changed them. Uh, or excuse me. I smelted them into bars. And I turned what I could into bronze. Because I am using mostly bronze stuff now. Uh, at least I'm trying to. Uh, and then I just leave the rest of the materials there. Now, I currently have um, 176 copper bar available to me. I've got 136 tin. Now, granted, I can turn a lot of that into bronze as well. And then I've got iron that I've just picked up here and there. I've literally picked up 47 uh, iron ore or bars just in the time I've been playing. I haven't been able to... Well, I take that back. I have mined some of that because I mined the cave that is over by Skalky. And it does have some iron nodes in it. And I did mine that one time when we were running those quests out there. So I did mine some of that from that cave. Because you can mine iron if it's available, but most caves do not have iron available until you get the mine building in your technology. That unlocks every cave that you can mine items in to have iron available to it. It, it like opens it up, makes it deeper or whatever. But anyway, let me get back into third person. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, meals. So I made a bunch of meals, if you remember. Um, where are they at? You see, I've got a ton of meat. This is all from my hunting. I've got some meat that's going to go bad. I should probably turn those into meals. But we've still got 52 meat and gravy left. Um, from my calculations, that should last us through this season and potentially next season before I have to make something else. Um, the meat itself, so this 37% uh, condition meat, that will lose condition, I believe it's 12 and a half or 13% each season. So I could actually go two more seasons Three more seasons, maybe, <clears throat> before that turns into rot. So we still got, technically, we got plenty of time to cook that meat. Because once you cook the meat, it brings it back to 100%, regardless of what it was before you cooked it. So, little, little cheat there. <laughs> but we've got a ton of meat. You can see we've got 291 there and 317 there, 183 and a 21. What is that? That's a two, three, four, five, six. We got 600 meat. Plus, I've got all of this dried meat that nobody's eating because I don't think dried meat shows up before meat and gravy in the priority list. Now, we got the priority list. We'll go into management. Um, where is my priority list? Right here. So in the management screen, that's going to be in uh, on your keyboard if you're playing PC keyboard. Um, you can click on this little icon here above where it says people. And these are, you'll have your food, or excuse me, people demand control. Now under food, you can turn on or off whatever you want your villagers to eat and stuff. Now most of this I've left on. 
uh, but, you know, but I've turned off certain things because, you know, maybe I'm going to want to make soured milk and use the soured milk to make cork and cork to make cheese eventually. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I may or may not. <laughs> that seems like a long drawn out process and I'm not sure if it's worth it or not. And it might be. I, I've never really gotten into that to know. I used to always make flatbread, but I've noticed uh, no, this is the flatbread with onion. I used to just make standard flatbread before the Oxbow update. Now I can't even find flatbread. This one. I used to make flatbread, but I've realized since I've been looking at these meals and stuff, flatbread doesn't seem to give as much um, of the hunger value as it used to. Because I'm pretty sure it used to give 40, and now I think it gives 12. And the flatbread with onion, I think, is 22. Which is good. It's okay. It's fair. You know, but you've got to have, you got to turn your wheat or whatever grain into flour. I think wheat is your, your, your most economical way to turn, to make flour. But you got to turn your, your grain into flour. And then you got to turn the flour into flatbread. And then, you know, in, in the kitchen and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, if you're doing onion in it for the extra added food value, you got to have crops of onion. But we can do the meat and the onion and get 40 food out of it because we make the meat and gravy. So it's just um, <laughs> it's it's all in a matter of what you really want to do. I mean, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I'm just trying to trying to learn all the different quirks that got changed in the game. And it's a process to learn it all, you know. And if there's somebody that can memorize all of it, man, more power to you. Because I have a trouble. I have trouble doing all of that. As long as I've played this game, I still have trouble remembering everything. But as I was looking through here, uh, we were looking at yeah. See, dried meat. There's the meat and gravy. So I've got right now 52 meat and gravy stored. And dried meat. We've got 133 dried meat stored. Okay. Sorry. There was a little break right there i had a phone call coming from my son's school i had to answer it we're having severe storms today and it, the schools are going to be closing early but it caused me to lose my train of thought i was talking about food and and you know values and buying or selling making the food to sell it i would end up talking about the flatbread i totally <laughs> that caused me to lose my complete train of thought dang it <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I was probably rambling too long anyway. So um, we've got water, uh, four buckets of water for the villagers. I'm going to need to make some more buckets. Uh, do we? How many do we have in here? We probably only have one or two in here, if we have any. Yes, there's two in here. All right, let's, let's grab those two there. Let's grab... What do we got 20 planks yeah let's take these 20 planks i know i need a drink matter of fact let's go ahead and do that uh bucket of water we're gonna drink 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 uh do i have any food on me no i don't i should probably grab some food because i don't have any on me uh what do we have in here so the apple is going to poison me that would poison me that would not let's go ahead and take these apples so we can go ahead and eat them uh what else i could actually take some of that dried meat and eat it we got roasted meat uh let's take the roasted meat it's not going to poison me so i'll keep those on me if nothing else at season change they will turn to probably turn to rot um open my inventory let's eat a little roasted meat there we go now let's go make some buckets. We'll go over here into the workshop and we're going to make buckets. How many can we make? 10. I'll just, yep, that's fine. I am absolutely happy making 10 buckets. Now, when I was doing uh, all of my farming and mining, I did get, oh, we got to fill them with water and not put them in the resource storage. And we're going to craft, put them all in, fill them all with water. But I did, um, while completing my mining and farming and stuff, I got 
uh, skill points in both of those, which I need to. I think I need to still place those. Uh, food, water. We're gonna drop that one in there, and I'm gonna drop all but one of these buckets of water in there. That way, I keep one on myself. And I should be okay there. And then we're gonna go into here. We're gonna go to skills. Uh, so I got two points in extraction, which uh, I think we're going to go for the careful miner, which is going to give us a 50% chance to extract additional resources from deposits. So that's going to get us more material when we go mining. So this is if you plan on doing any mining, this is definitely a good skill to get into. Obviously, you want to grab mule as quick as you can because that increases your carry weight overall once you get to tier three by 15 kilograms. Uh, so you got a, a really nice big bag that you can carry stuff in. Now, beyond uh, mule, careful miner is going to be a really good one to have because you're going to get more resources out of each mine you visit. Again, if you're one of those people that are hitting multiple mines and multiple caves on the map to make items to sell, this is going to be invaluable to you for sure. Because they have a 50% chance to extract additional resources is always good. Now, how many resources you get, I don't know, but it's only a 50% chance to extract additional resources. It's not 50% more resources. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Uh, let's see. One with earth is durability of pickaxes and shovels. Okay, not bad. I guess it depends on what you're actually doing. Uh, the faster mining and digging for the next 10 seconds stacks up. This is actually a good one as well, because then obviously when you're going uh, mining or digging, you're going to be doing it faster because it's going to give you a little a little buff that increases your your speed of digging or mining. Same thing with woodcutters, trance, or excavation master. Oh, this is the stamina consumption. Uh, where is the one with the earth? Treasure hunter. I thought there was, let's see, excavation master. Uh, oh, faster tree cutting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I, I don't know. I missed that for whatever reason. That's the one I was trying to think of. But faster tree cutting, this is also a good one to have. If you're doing uh, a lot of uh, tree chopping, this is something good to go into. But I personally, I went into mule as quickly as I could. Um, and then careful miner before really going and, and maxing anything else. Now, for some nature, I could do the durability loss of axes. If you're the one that's doing all the wood chopping, this is going to be good for you. And then this is going to be good for you as well. But anyway, I've got one more point to spend. I think I'm going to go for the... Uh, hmm. um, I'm not doing a ton of tree chopping right now, even though I probably need to. What do I want to take? I'm not taking any points in the knowledge. That was kind of the thing when we first started the series, not to go into extraction knowledge unless it was absolutely necessary to unlock the next tier. Excavation master, slowest stamina consumption during ex extraction activities. I'm not having a stamina problem because I'm just not having a stamina problem. But it's not a bad thing to have. I'll go for the miner's trance. Since I am doing the mining, at least until we get the mine unlocked. Oh, I'm, I still had another skill in farming. Oh, I got one skill in farming. Um, so we got the skilled rider, which is stamina consumption for the mount. Knight rider, which is faster riding. We got it maxed out already. Carrot on a stick is increases mount's carry weight. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like that. Skilled Orchman, Farmer's Trance, Master, is Stamina Consumption, Careful Farmer is Durability to Loss of Farming Tools, Skilled Farmer, which is already maxed, which we get 100% chance to harvest additional crops, which means we are going to get additional crops. I just don't know how many we're going to get. I don't think it's, I don't know that it's a set amount. Uh... Stamina consumption. Let's go with the carrot on a stick, which is the carry weight. 
that's going to help us carry more things around to the different villages to sell. Good. Alrighty, so did I put the water? Yes, I put the water away. Uh, I have a little bit of food on me, so that's good. Now, I think what we're going to do is actually get some things ready. And then that way, maybe in the next episode, we can go and sell some stuff and do a quest. What do we want to make to sell? Now, I've got a bunch of carrots and I'm going to have carrots available to me as well. So I could make a bunch of meals to sell. But I don't know whether it's going to actually be worth it. So if we go and look in the kitchen at what we can make. So like I'm thinking, was it stew? Yeah, stew is two meat and two carrots, but this doesn't tell me how much it sells for. We actually have to go into different screen for that. Um, now the potage is two cabbage and three meat. Now I think the potage was one of those things that I was looking at possibly selling because I think if I remember right, the potage is going to sell for 20. I think it's listed for 40, but I think it, it but you're going to only going to get half, so it'll sell for 20. Now, the three meat, we can turn it into roasted meat and sell them for 8 a piece, I think it was. Gosh, I don't remember. The the roasted meat and the dried meat sell for the same amount. Oh, I have do I have that roasted meat on me? Right there. Okay. So it sells for 4 a piece. So that meal would sell for profit. The potage, this one, not the one with salt, even though I have salt, but I'm not using it because we don't, I don't think we have a way to make salted meat just yet. I think we have to have the hunting lodge too. Um, but this one would produce profit because that with the meat, we if we even turned it into roasted or dried meat, it would sell for 12 coins. And then cabbage in the wood bowl. How much does the wood bowl sell for? Do we have any wood bowls? That's going to be a question. I think we have plates, but not bowls. Wood plate, which is going to, I think they're going to sell for the same. Not even a coin. It's going to be, uh, what is that, 0. 0.7? So it's going to sell for... 0.35 so uh, yeah that's not even a thing and then the cabbage just to sell the cabbage which i don't oh you know what i put i think there were four cabbage in there and i put them in the barn to turn them to rot so let's do this yeah see they're 25 percent already uh cabbage sells for three so it's going to sell for 1.5 so still we got 1.5 we've got 0.35 so it's 1.85 for the cabbage and the bowl and what was it two cabbage or one cabbage remember now i think it was one cabbage and three meat is that right yes two two cabbage and three meat okay so we've got three coins for the cabbage 12 coins for the meat um is that right? Yes, that is right. And then the bowl, which is almost nothing. So like 16, so it would, it would cost us, it was make us 16 coins. If we sold the items individually, it's going to make us 20 coins to make the meal. That's not a huge profit to be perfectly honest. Now, let's go back into, uh, where is it? The technology. Let's find the kitchen. Potage. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. So you can see here the potage is listed for 40. Over here on the right-hand side. It's going to sell for 20 because you get half of that. So the potage, I mean, you can sell it and make, you'll make four coins. Technically, you'll make four coins over selling the individual items. Now, obviously you're going to make 20 coins because you've produced everything. You didn't buy anything to make this. So you're going to make the 20 coins. 
So it all depends on how you want to look at it. The time spent collecting, farming, cooking, all of that good stuff. I don't particularly think this is a great thing to sell, but if you are selling it, then you're making 20 coins per meal minus time. At least that's the way I'm looking at it. What else do we have available in here? Um, we're not collecting mushrooms or anything. Uh, we got carrot and we got meat. We got a little bit of onion left, so we could do more meat and gravy uh, as our meals. Uh, how, whoops, I meant to look to see the meat and gravy. What does that sell for? That's going to sell for 17. It even sells for less. Which means that we're going to make, what, eight and a half on that? We can sell two dried meat practically and make eight coin. So selling, I just don't see selling the meals as being a really viable thing. Now granted, we just have an abundance of of crops. So selling the meals, we could do it because I've got plenty of, I know I got out of that. We have plenty of food to where I can turn whatever we have left in onion and meat in the meat and gravy and have it last because it takes three onion and one dried meat to make meat and gravy so i can make um i can't make 300 i'd, I'd need 300 onion to make is that right yeah i'd need 300 onion to make 100 meals So what, we can maybe make 70 meals? Somewhere thereabouts. Which I can do that. But as the meals lower in condition, they sell for less money. Same, same as anything, any item in the game. It sells for less money the lower the condition. Um... All right, so I think I think we make the carrots with the meat, <clears throat> make stew, make whatever is left, meat and gravy, sell all of the meat and gravy, leave the stew for the villagers to eat this year this season and we'll see how that works out i think that sounds good um how much weight is that more than i can probably carry so i'm gonna have to carry that drop it over there then i'm gonna have to make a bunch of bowls which we have plates already but whatever uh let's drop that that's hard to see okay and then we need the meat I don't think we're going to need as much meat. We're going to take all of this meat that's getting ready to rot. There, we'll just take those two stacks for right now, because I don't think I'm going to need a ton of meat. Um, where's it at? Meat. There it is. We're going to drop that, and we can drop that. And then we're going to have to go get some logs and make some bowls. Uh, we'll grab those 27 logs, run over here, and let's make some bowls. Uh, we got to unlock the bowl. We get five per. That's going to be 27 bowls. I feel we're going to need to make more than that. But we shall see. All right, 27 bowls. Wait a minute. I made that 27 times. How many bowls did that get us? 135 bowls. Oh, okay. Well, that should be plenty of bowls then. Because I don't think we could make... I don't think we have enough materials to make that much. Uh, let's grab that. And that. And get into first person. And grab that. Nope. Grab. Grab. There we go. Then we can go into the cauldron. Go into soups. Go into stew, which is right here. We're going to buy that. And we're going to make, it's going to allow us to make 101. We'll see what we got left over. We may need to go back and grab some more meat because we still have, what, 34 bowls left. Boom. There we go. 
now if you're so if you are in third person you can only spin the camera your person doesn't move if you're in first person you can see that my feet are physically moving so i'm turning so i can actually turn around and drop items on the floor i know that you what am i in first person right yeah i'm first person why am i stuck i feel like i'm stuck um let's go to the inventory i'm going to drop the meals on the floor just like that okay so then I can, I can pick those up and, and split those in a minute, but I want to see what I have left. Um, I've got 410 carat. Do I have any meat left? No meat. Do I have any bowls left? How many, I, oh, I have 27 bowls left, right? No, 34. So let's grab a little bit more meat. Uh, where's the meat? I think I have 34 bowls bowls left so we can grab 34 meat no nope, not what i wanted to do 34 okay because it's it's one meat was it one meat or two i bet it was two meat because it's the carrots it's two meat grab another 34 oh perfect do that and then we can come back over here and make this one. Yes. Yeah, it's two and two. Two carrot, two meat. So that should finish off all of our bowls. Which it looks like we might even be able to make more. Just need more bowls. Am I right? Meat and bowls. We got 334 carrots left. Holy Toledo. It's a lot. Okay, so we're gonna drop this. Uh food. There. Okay, so we got 343 carrots. I don't remember how many we started with. Holy crap. But it's two carrots each. So that's gonna be a hundred and 56? That's going to be 156. Do I have 156 meat? Like, I'm going to run out of meat before I run out of anything else. Oh, I do have 156 meat. Okay. Okay, then let's do that. We're going to make up a bunch of this stuff. Uh, we need 156. Is that right? 156 meat? Is it two and two? Gosh, dang it, I can't remember. I think it's two and two. I'm sorry, ladies. I did not mean to knock you over. It is two and two. So we need 330, excuse me, 342 meat. Okay. Do I have that? Yes, I do. So I need all of that meat plus an extra almost hundred. And then we can make all of these into meals. I'm going to drop these carrots too. There we go. Let's go grab another hundred meat. Because we've been collecting this meat for quite some time actually. And then I can utilize the rest of the meat for meat and gravy and just keep feed, feed the villagers or vice versa, whatever it is. Because I, to feed the villagers a year, whether it's the stew or the meat and gravy, right now, if I don't add any more villagers, I need 164 meals for the entire year. Because I was doing the math before the video. All right, let's drop this. And then how many? I need 150 something bowls. Um, carrying too much. Yeah, I know. Just grab two stacks of logs. That's fine. All right, now let's go back into here and we are going to make 
We're going to have five bowls each. So we want, what, 25? Is that right? Math is hard when you're recording a video. <laughs> what do we get? We got 125 wooden bowls. We need we need 20 something more. No, I didn't mean to click that one time. Dead gummit. Uh, so we'll do that. That should be fine. Gives us 25. Yeah, it gave us 25, so we got 155 bowls now. That should be more than enough bowls to do what we need to do. That, that, that. And we'll look at the cauldron. Go into there. Do that. And we can we can make 155 stew. I may have not even got enough bowls to make everything, but this will be fine. We got a lot of meals that we can take in and sell. You're carrying too much. You think? I've got 155 meals in my pocket. I'm sure they're gonna taste great after they've been in my pocket. Okay, so let's go into the inventory. Let's drop that. That's 116 kilograms. Like I'm gonna have to split those Actually, let's do this. Let's split that to 80. Is that still... That's 100... Wow. Okay. We're going to split that into... Is it 80? Yeah, it's roughly middle-ish. That'll be fine. We'll drop that one. And then we're going to drop this one because i got to be able to get them and put them in Miss Donkey and myself. I don't even know that we're going to be able to carry all of those. Uh, let's pick these up here and these up here, and we'll split those in half to make them more manageable as well. We're going to drop half, drop that one half, and then we're going to drop this one half. There we go. Perfect. They stacked nicely. Now we can call Miss Donkey. Where's Miss Donkey? Miss Donkey! Hello! Oh, there you are. You magically appeared over here, even though you were technically in the stables. Whoops. Nope. I wanted to get on you so we can move you closer to the food storage. And... Exit. Now, how much weight can she carry? A total of 85 kilograms, but she's already got 12 on her. So we can do 73 kilograms for Miss Donkey before she is overweight. Open saddlebags, go to food. Okay, so that's 49 and a half. That's good. Transfer those in, into Miss Donkey. Go ahead and grab another little bit. See how much more she can carry. I don't know that we're going to be able to take all of this. Um, what is she at? 6150. That's going to be... 23 and a half that she can take. Okay, let's see if we can do 23 and a half. We'll do 23 to 5. There we go. She's pretty much maxed out. And I am already overweight, but I've got extra stuff on me. So let's go put the extra stuff away. Uh, food. Go. I don't need the cabbage. Uh, I'm going to drop the roasted meat that I picked up and the apple that I picked up to eat. And I'm still overweight. <laughs> what else do I have in my pocket? Logs. Oh, I got 19 logs on me. Oh, well, that'll do it. Jeez Louise. Let's jump up here and drop these 19 logs off. There we go. Then we got two stacks. I don't know that I'm going to be able to carry all of that. And I'm already overweight. So what we are going to do is bring this stuff over here. But I'm not going to put it in the chest. Actually, I will. I think I will. So what I can do is I can put this stuff in the chest. I'm going to just put those in the chest. 
And we are going to put these in the chest. Now, what did I say? 164 they could eat? I don't know why I'm changing that to food. Uh, stew. Okay. And food. Stew. So what do they need? 100 and... No. They need... 50. They need 50 meals. Is all they need. And then they can eat stew for the rest of... For the whole next year. There we go. Then I will take the meat and gravy. And sell it. And we can do that. And I'll actually take this dried meat. Uh, we'll take the lowest condition dried meat. Try and take meat until I'm encumbered. Was that 68? I can take 12 kilograms. I can take all of that. Okay, well, let's let's go and get some more. We can take five more. There we go. Now I'm I'm maxed out. So when we go, I can sell all of the stew. I can sell all of the meat, or, uh, meat and gravy, and all of the dried meat that I have, and then all of the stew that Miss Donkey has, and and all of that. However, <laughs> we are oh, it's dark, and I didn't make torches today. And I needed to. Uh, but anyway, we'll do that in the next episode. We'll head to town. We'll sell that stuff that we made. Um, see what kind of coin we get for selling the food. Now, granted, we're just selling straight food, which isn't a big deal. I probably spent way too much time uh, analyzing it in this episode. But it is what it is. It's things that, uh, that go through my mind. But anyway, if you folks are liking these episodes, definitely hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I greatly appreciate it. And we will see you folks in the next one. Oh, special thank you to my members. I cannot forget my members. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you for your support. And we will see you folks in the next one. You take care and happy hunting.